Hi, I'm James Deacon, and today I'm going to do something a little bit different and review the book Gang Changer by Jean-Manuel Isere and Aneb Singer and talk about some of the applicability of ideas in the book to digital media environments. One disclosure is that I worked with Jean-Manuel Isere in the San Francisco office of BCG around 2000 and 2001. First, I'll start by saying this is an excellent book, and I highly recommend it. While I think there is a ton of good material in the book, I believe that the main contribution is in the framework for examining different market and internal forces that a company may be experiencing when it's setting price, and how those forces inform the techniques for thinking about price setting. The framework is born out of the realization that Jean-Manuel had that a number of different companies in different markets face different forces, and this requires a different approach to pricing. I've heard Jean-Manuel talk in a public forum about how he realized that when he was working with gas stations in France, he was able to use price elasticity based on how far the consumers were from those gas stations and also the prices of the gas that were advertised. However, when he moved into the hard drive industry in the U.S., those same price elastic effects just didn't exist. It was a dynamic much more informed by the competition between the leading providers. Honestly, I wish this was a realization I had 20 years ago. At that time, I was working for a company called Wrapped that was a San Francisco-based company and specialized in pricing. And we had a very sophisticated pricing engine that we would use to work with companies as diverse as digital media through hardware and configuration companies. And what we found was that the pricing engine worked a lot better in some situations than it did in others. And I think if we'd had the knowledge that uh, this book provides in terms of thinking about those dynamics, we would have been better equipped to think through which industries the software tools would work better in. So, what is the framework? The authors look at the different dynamics associated with cost, competitor, and value. Let's talk about these each one at a time. The first cost is pretty obvious. Do you have a hard cost associated with your product? And so if you're in a hard goods industry, a high proportion of your costs are going to come from the, um, the fixed costs associated with the goods. At the opposite end of the spectrum, we have digital media or digital goods where a very small proportion of the costs are going to be hard costs. For competitor, they talk about the different market dynamics. Are you in an industry where there is one clear leader or there is a concentrated number of a small number of competitors or there are many competitors who all compete in different ways? And so it's that question of how do you think about the competitive environment? Finally, there's the dimension of value. And the way the authors think about it is, is there a significant amount of economic value beyond what the competitors can offer? And so they have these three different dimensions. And the concept of the strategic hexagon derives from these three forces. Essentially, they look at a Venn diagram of these overlapping forces. And where there is intersection of these forces, they believe that different techniques are appropriate. They actually go further and say that a different game is being played in each quadrant. I'm not going to go through every quadrant because there is too much complexity for today's discussion, but instead just focus on how different techniques may be appropriate even within the same industry. And I'm going to talk about the industry I'm most familiar with, digital media. So first, let's focus on the section in their hexagon that is the overlap between all three forces. It's the section in the middle. It's the section in white. It's characterized by inventory that is either perishable or whose value changes constantly. Many buyers with different and fluctuating needs. And of course, the industries that best characterize this are the hotel and airline industries, 
These are the industries that invented yield management and revenue management. So within digital media, where is this dynamic seen? It's in the transaction of online ads. Initially, Google were who rolled out auction-based uh, dynamics first, and then later we saw the same dynamics within display ads. In my time at Yahoo, we experienced these dynamics firsthand. Initially, we would set prices in a rate card and change them every year or every quarter, and then that became every month or every week until it outpaced the ability of people to set price. We had to move to a fully automated environment. And in this case, successful price setting depends on your ability to ingest and understand significant amounts of data. Indeed, the authors of Game Changer say that the most important functional group for this game is the data sciences team. So if you're a pricing team in a large publisher, you know which game you have to play of the seven that they outline in the book. Let's think about if you're in the digital media space, though, and you may be faced with different challenges. What if you're a company that instead of selling online ads is selling advertising technology? Maybe you're an SSP or you're a DSP or you're selling data services. In those cases, the dynamic game is not appropriate. You are now dealing with a game where there is a small number of potential buyers, or at least smaller than in the online ads example. You aren't dealing with inventory that is constantly changing. You are selling a product or service that has more clearly defined value. So which game is appropriate? I don't think the answer is as clear as for digital display ads, which very clearly falls into the middle segment. But there is a leading contender. Let's talk through it. The first thing to observe is that while it feels like there are hundreds of different technology companies in advertising technology and marketing technology, in reality, within each segment, there are a relatively small number of players. There are only a handful of SSPs that really matter. There are only a handful of DSPs that matter. There are only a handful of verification and fraud vendors. And so the seller market can be very concentrated. In terms of buyer behavior, the customers can be varied. Everything from large global agencies down to medium and small sized advertisers. So let's look at how this compares to the key characteristics they list in the book for price to competition. The comparison is pretty good. The only thing that I was initially dubious of when I saw this is the offer column. It asserts from the book that the sellers compete by customizing from a large set of options. If you think about how SSPs and DSPs have traditionally priced in digital media, this doesn't initially seem like customization from a large range of options would be appropriate, since the perception is that for DSPs and SSPs, the key price dynamic is the overall platform fee, which tends to be just one number. However, in practice, the ad tech providers now all compete on the additional services that they bundle in. In addition to a flat platform fee, they might have a range of data and targeting services that they provide. They might offer the ability to use third-party vendors and then offer discount rates on those services. They may offer the ability to access private marketplaces for preferred customers. In short, they're customizing their bundles and services to the needs of their clients. One interesting thing to think about if you're an ad tech provider and you are only offering one flat fee product is that you may be losing out to competitors that realize the game is about providing a bundle of different options that the customer may find compelling. Again, a lot of the value in the book Game Changes is around challenging companies to think about which game they are playing and is it the right game to be playing and whether they have the opportunity to change it. Finally, if you're getting value from this content, please remember to hit the subscribe button. Thank you.